let us come let us adore you kneel down before you kneel down before you in your presence Lord worship worship
And we want to wish a happy birthday to the birthday sure. in August. We it's have not. Sister Gloria mm -hmm. Love's birthday, which is August 13th. Sister <laughs> Josephine Lee's birthday is August 15th. Evangelist Wade's birthday is August 21st. And Brother Jameer Davis' his birthday is August 30th. Season your announcements, please go with yourself accordingly. Amen.
Claudette Broughton, Greg Chambers, Tarnika Garnett, Egypt Gates, Guyana Grant, Pastor and Mrs. Dominic Hampton, Lorraine McNear, Mother Betty Moody, Deborah and Kevin Moore, Patricia Meeks, Hosanna Ministries, Brother Walter Jordan III, Deacon Claude Radley and Mother Greta Radley, Sister Dorothy Strickland, Sister Beulah Tucker, and the family of Sister Lonea Lynn Wilson. We are praying for you and you and you. Let us bow our heads. For the Bible tells us all we should always pray and not faint. Father God, Almighty God, here we are, my Father, once more and again, trying to turn you some kind of thanks. For you've been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We just ask you, my Father, please to have mercy. So many things going on in this society, my Father, that we cannot keep up with it all. But we know that you are still in charge. We know that you can bring us through anything, my Father. We just thank you for those that are here. Pray for those that are on our prayer list, Lord. You heard the names called, but there are some that I can't call. Some that I don't know, but you've been an all-knowing God. You know all those that are in the hospital. You know all of those, my Father, that are walking the streets of the city. You know those, my Father, that are ailing right now. And we just thank you that you're keeping us, my Father. You're able us to come, that we can look to God and say, what must I do to be saved? You can tell us, my Father, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That we were buried and he rose again the third day morning. And we just thank you this morning. You heard me, my Father, call the list that I'm named but there are many, many more, my Father, that are going through some trials and tribulations. We thank you these that are here, my Father, have gone and come, and they are here to glorify and magnify your name. Bless this choir. Bless this church. Bless every church door that's open in your name. Thank you, my Father, for this another opportunity. In Jesus' precious name, we ask it all. Thank you, my Father. Amen. Let's all say amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. As we come and continue to worship and praise our God, we're going to ask our choir to come and render us a selection. Following the selection, the voice you will hear will be that of our pastor, Pastor Dominique Hanson. Let us say amen. Come on.
we just thank you all today for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Oh God, we just ask you on today to give us a word on today. Give us a word that will encourage us. Give us a word that will enlighten us. Give us a word, oh God, that will make us leave this place better than when we came. So we can continue to declare that you are God and there is none like you. Lord, we ask all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise for us today. Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse number 13. Amen. The word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ speaks to us as follows. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doeth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall? and lead him away to watering. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his most precious word. You may be seated Amen. in the presence of the Lord. Yes. I want to use that scripture this morning to speak to you using the subject, Can the Crooked Be Made Straight? Yes, Can the Crooked right. Be Made Straight? Right. You know, I just, you know, my family and I, we just came back from trip overseas, and we spent a few days walking around the cities and taking in sights and looking at all the, the attractions and going into restaurants and eating and, and, and doing all the things that tourist people do. And on the last day of our trip, you know, we did everything the kids wanted to do. You know, we didn't do nothing I wanted to do. <laughs> well, the very last day, it was Mimi's day. Okay. So, of course, on Mimi's day, we spent our last day overseas shopping. <laughs> so, I noticed when we were walking down the street, walking into store after store after store after store. I noticed that in each store in the windows are mannequins. These mannequins are used to 
to display what is inside of the store. They're used to draw people into the store to potentially buy what's in the store behind them. Amen. With the potential of the meeting the store owner to receive the best deal. Mm -hmm. Now uh, they have what they call imperfect mannequins. Mm -hmm. They're not these perfect stick figured mannequins they have now. Mannequins that represent all body types. So that when you see these mannequins and you see the clothes or the, the jewelry that's on these mannequins, you can see yourself spying what these mannequins are displaying. Coming to tell you today, we as a people of God, we are used by God. To draw people into the store of God. Amen. So that they can acquire what is offered by the store behind us. Right. And for the potential for others to meet the store owner. Mm -hmm. To give them the best deal of a lifetime. Right. Well, right. Lots of times God will use you not for your benefit. Mm -hmm. But for the benefit of others. Right. And we should be extremely thankful today that the Lord has chosen us to display what he has to offer the people of the world. He offers the people of the world salvation. He offers the people of the world joy and peace. He offers the people of the world an opportunity to have a relationship with him. And I come and tell you, God uses us to draw people to him. So we can declare to a dying world that we serve a Savior who's able to do the impossible. That we serve a Savior who's able to heal sick bodies. That we serve a Savior who's able to turn lives around. Is there anybody here on today? In this text, we read about a woman who's in a church. 
She's been in church for a long time. The Bible tells us that she is struck in and suffering with an ailment for 18 years. She's been bent over from the waist. Not able to lift herself up. Spent all her days looking at the ground. Not able to lift up her head. She's been coming to church. Not finding any help. Not finding any encouragement. But for 18 years, she's been bent over. And the Bible says Jesus walked into the church house. And Jesus called her by name. And when he called her by name, she made her way to where Jesus was. And the Bible tells us that Jesus touched her. And she was made straight. She was made whole. Her life has never been the same since she was touched by the Lord. Is there anybody here who has that same testimony? That once you've been touched by the Lord, your life has never been the same. But that's not the only story in this text. I believe that Jesus did what he did, not specifically for the woman. But he did what he did for everybody else that was around. Jesus did what he did because he wanted the worshipers. He wanted the church house to be made straight. And in this text, we are looking at some worshipers, some church people who have crooked attitudes and they need to be straightened out spiritually. We see a few things in this text uh, that should help us here on today. First thing we see is we see a people who are too conceited to be compassionate. Here's this woman who just gets her deliverance. She's been 18 years bent over from the waist, suffering in her life, not knowing where her deliverance is going to come from. But one day when she's in the church house, Jesus is in the building. And Jesus delivers her from her ailment. But the Bible says that this ruler of the synagogue, he gets upset. He was so caught up in the rules and the regulations of church that he couldn't celebrate her deliverance. And I come to ask on today, have we gotten to a place in our lives that when people get delivered, we don't even care anymore? Have we come to a place in our own religious spirituality that when people get saved, when people give their life over to the Lord, that it doesn't give us any second thoughts. We, 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 we are in church and, and when people give their lives over to the Lord, when they sacrifice their lives to receive what God has to offer, too many times we sit down and we give a half clap. Baby. We give a half amen. And we don't want to give of ourselves to celebrate what God has just done in somebody else's life. You can tell who is really a child of God by how they celebrate somebody else's breakthrough. We need to have more witnesses. We need to have more people who can testify. Even if God doesn't come my way, I'm still going to give him praise. I'm still going to give him glory because I know that he's blessing somebody else. If you, if you don't mind, go ahead and turn to somebody and say, I give God the praise on today because 
position of power actually had little power. It's interesting that here it is. This is the ruler of the synagogue. The one who God has placed in power over this specific church house. He gets upset. He gets angry. Because somebody in the church experiences a breakthrough by God. It is interesting that when people get a little power, we have the hardest time with people who have a little power. Because they forgot that when they were given their little power, they were given their little power so they can point to the one who has all the power. In the moment we forget that God, the one with all power, has gifted you and has graced you with a little power to show his all power, you will always end up wasting your position. We must get to the point where we do less pointing at ourselves and more pointing to God. We can't be so caught up in our position. We can't be so caught up in the fact that we've been gifted this gift of salvation that we only look at our sin. That we're only we only worried about what we want to do in it. Worried about what we have going on in our lives. But God saved us. God gifted us. God placed us in position so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. God blessed us and he positioned us so that we can declare God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. Is there anybody here who can testify? I know that God has been good to me. I know that God has made a way. I know that I don't deserve to be where I am today. But I'm here to testify. God has been good. Is there anybody here who's not ashamed to say, I thank the Lord on today? I thank him for his grace. I thank him for his goodness. I thank him for his mercy. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. So I'm going to give him all the praise and all the glory because all the power belongs to him. You see? With position but little power. We also see people who corrupted the congregation. Here is this ruler of the synagogue who is furious, who is angry about what Jesus had just done. And look at what the Bible says and he does. The Bible says that this ruler doesn't turn to Jesus, but he turns to the congregation. He has an issue with Jesus. But instead of discussing the issue with the one he has an issue with, he decides to speak to the congregation. He doesn't have enough boldness to address Jesus. But he turns to the congregation and starts boiling up some mess in the pews. Because he is not Christian enough to go to the one he has an issue with. All right. All right. Can I drop this diamond here real quick? Right. Because just because you are religious doesn't make you a Christian. That's it. That's it. Just because you are religious and follow the rules, the regulations, and the rituals of church doesn't mean you are spiritual in Christ. This is why people don't like to come to church anymore. Because there are too many messy people who are religious, but they are spiritual. And I'm not saying that there are any of these here in the sanctuary or in the virtual land today. But 
may I declare on today that the Bible says uh -huh. yes, that when you have an issue with somebody, go to the person you have an issue with. Stop involving people who don't have nothing to do with your mess. Because before you know it, the whole congregation is corrupted because you couldn't go to the person who offended you. Not only does the congregation get corrupted, but the family members of the congregation gets corrupted. The community surrounding the congregation gets corrupted. The ministry gets corrupted. And therefore, the gospel of Christ uh, that is supposed to be taught and preached through the ministry becomes corrupted all because you feel like you have something to say. Is there anybody here who can declare, I will not spread mess through the people of God, but I'm Christian enough, I'm spiritual enough, that I have an issue with somebody, I'm going to go to them and declare what I have an issue with. It's time for us to stop all the gossiping. Oh, 
trapped in traditions. Yes. And because of this, they became a people who were ultimately ashamed. Uh -huh. When Jesus hears what this ruler tells a congregation, he puts them in their place. Well, well. He says, in other words, in so many words, you spend your Sabbath day taking care of animals. You make sure that your animals are untied or unbound so that the animals can receive what they need. But here is this woman, a child of God. And you have a problem with her being loose. You have a problem with her being untied. You have a problem with her getting what she needs. All because it's a Sabbath day. He pretty much says, shame on you. Shame on you for not having compassion. Shame on you for having the, the shield of Christ on your chest, but yet you act the same as the devil. Shame on you that you will look after your animals more than you will look after a child of God. Yeah. And the Bible says that all who were his adversaries, all who disagreed with what he did, began to feel ashamed. May I suggest to you that we must be extremely careful how we handle God's business. Because there may come a time yes, when God will put us in our place yes, yes. and we will ultimately be put to shame. Wow. Oh, there are so many stories, so many instances when people don't handle God's business correctly and then God puts them to shame. There was recently an incident that happened not so long ago. When a church was robbed of its offerings, the, the, the story tells us that this pastor left the church service, ran after the thieves in an attempt to catch them. Well, a couple of days later, reports started popping up all across social media about how this pastor exploits his members including an incident where he stole the estate of an elderly member for about $700,000. His, 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 his plot was exploited. He was put to shame because of how he represented the word of God. And I don't know about you, but I don't want no parts of being ashamed. I want no parts of being ashamed of how I handle God's business. How I handle God's word. And how I handle the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must be careful of how we display what God has to offer his people. But the good news the good news is that these people who were crooked were made straight. For the Bible says after they felt ashamed that not some of the people, but the Bible says all of the people gave God the glory for all the things that he has done. Isn't it good to know that God can turn any situation around? God can turn any household of hell into a household of joy. God can turn any marriage of horror into a marriage of sanctified bliss. God can turn any stressful job into a job of promotion and prosperity. 
First of all, as a church, we must watch our attitude. Especially when it comes to God's business. And if we think ourselves as being too big because of our position, God will see to it that we will become small. God will see to it that he will put us in our place. If we are built up with pride and begin to stick our noses up at people, God will do his part to make sure you become ashamed. Not only that, but after all of this, after all of this commotion that has taken place in the scriptures, I want us to go back to verse number 13. Amen. Well, it tells us that when God healed this woman, yeah. when God made her straight, yeah. that no matter what was going on around her, right. no matter how bad she was being treated, I know. I know. she glorified God. Yeah. 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 May I suggest to you that it doesn't matter how great your church is, doesn't matter how well the choir may sing. Doesn't matter how awesome the preacher may be. Doesn't matter how many people are in the pews. There will always be some people in the church who are going to try to minimize the goodness of God in your life. So you might as well walk in the church alley. You might as well walk in the church giving God the glory. Even if you are praising him all by yourself. Because only you know just how good God has been to you. Only you know how far God has brought you. Only you know the doors that he's opened and the doors that he shut just for you. Only you know how much pain and discomfort and how much mischief and trouble the Lord has delivered you from. So stop worrying about other people around you. Just go ahead and praise him all by yourself. Is there anybody here who can give God praise on today and say, I know who my God is. I know what he's done for me. So I'm just going to give him the glory. I'm going to give him the praise because he is worthy. There are crooked businesses. There's even crooked churches. But the only thing crooked that I'm concerned with is my crooked self. And this one thing I do know about my crooked self is that my crookedness has been made straight. So the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Somebody ought to declare I know a God who loved me so much and he came down through 42 generations born of a virgin named Mary. Walk the streets of the city, healing the sick and raising folk from the dead. But he was ridiculed and he was scorned. They ripped him and beat him all night long. Put a crown of thorns on top of his head. Put a heavy cross on his back. Marched that cross up a hill called Calvary. On top of that hill, he had his hands and his feet nailed to the cross. They lifted him up high so the world can see him die. While he hung there on the cross, a whole lot of crookedness was going on. People around him was making fun of him. People around him was gambling for his robe. So 
people that were closest to him ran away from him. God, it seems like God has turned his back on him. But he can continue to die on our behalf. For he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And the Bible says, on that Friday afternoon, Jesus hung his head. And he died for the sins of the world. Is there anybody here who's so glad that God died just for you? That he came to suffer and die on your behalf. But I'm so glad today that the story doesn't end there. For they took his body down from the cross. Laid him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there for three long days. But early one Sunday morning, the crooked became straight because my Jesus got out the way with the power in his hands. And is there anybody here who from the land today that he has the power to make the crooked?
out of no way. ET stands for the anticipated purpose. Because we have been created to do great things. And so we ought to walk in the greatness and walk in the victory that God has created in us. EP stands for expired pain. Because if we walk in the power of God, it doesn't matter the struggles and the sufferings we go through. There will come a day where those pains will expire. The EP stands for an extended pathway. Because even though it seems like we are a small church, God has extended our journey. He's extended our role ways. He's taken away the obstacles. And he's allowed for us to do anything that God has commanded for us to do. The EP stands for encounter power. Because we all know that we've been encountered with his Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that's in us that will allow us to do what God has commissioned in us. The EP is, uh, stands for encourage progress. Because no matter how dim things may seem, no matter how tough things may get, we are encouraged by the word of God. Be strong, reaching towards the mark of the prize of the high cause. And EP stands for an elevated praise because we serve a God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think, according to the power that is within us. And I wonder if there is anybody here who can testify.